Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Shorts. I'm Alex Morcate, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the base stop lease in commercial real estate. So in this episode, we're going to explore first what is the base stop lease. We're going to define what really makes it unique, the concept of the base year. And then we're going to illustrate how that base year or how that base stop kind of limits an owner's responsibility, it kind of establishes a ceiling on the amount that they owe and a floor on the amount that the tenant owes. And we'll couch that within the total lease spectrum so you understand how these different parties are sharing responsibilities of expenses. Let's get started. All right, so first is what is the base stop lease? A base stop lease is the kind of lease that establishes a limit or a ceiling on the total amount of expense obligation an owner has. So that if, in, if there is an increase in operating expenses above a certain amount, the tenant becomes responsible for paying that increase. So what this really effectively does is it establishes a ceiling on the total amount of expenses an owner has to worry about, and it establishes a floor on the total amount of expenses a tenant has to worry about. So if you really think about this in terms of differences, if operating expenses increase above a certain amount, the tenant is now responsible for paying for anything above that amount. They're responsible for paying all those increases. So let's go through a quick example. So I think the easiest way to do this is to define why is it even called a base stop lease? And this really is a reference to the base year concept. So under the base year concept, an owner and a tenant will agree on two things. First, what is the operating expenses for the property? So they'll define and itemize what all the expenses are and what that estimate or actual amount is. Next, they'll define the period of time during which that estimate was made. So it could have been last year, it could be current year, it could be the next forward-looking 12 months. Whatever period of time, both parties will come to terms and they will agree on first the estimate during that period of time. So once they've established the estimate and the period of time, they're both kind of agreeing that if operating expenses increase above that amount, into the future. The tenant will pick up the tab. The tenant will be responsible for paying those increases. So let's take a look at a quick example. In this example, owner and tenant have agreed that $100,000 is the estimate of operating expenses on this given property. And anything above the $100,000 is going to be due by the tenant to reimburse the owner. So in this example, a tenant is occupying 2,500 square feet of a 10,000 square foot building. So about 25%, actually 25%. The operating expenses were both agreed on that they will amount to $100,000. So if operating expenses increase above $100,000, tenant is responsible for paying that increase. So let's see what happens. If the following year, so if year two is $103,000 worth of operating expenses, we have a $3,000 increase. So what this really means is if year two is looking ahead through time and year one is current year, then anything over that current year amount is going to be due for reimbursement. So the tenant occupies 25% of the building the increase was $3,000 in year two. And so this tenant in that end of year two period needs to reimburse to the landlord their share of that increase. So the 25% of the $3,000. So just to kind of illustrate what this would look like, if they occupied 100% of the building, they would be responsible for reimbursing 100% of the increase. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens if you redefine base year. So let's say base year is now year two 
instead of year one or current year. So same circumstance, 10,000 square feet, 2,500 square foot tenant, operating expenses were $100,000 year one, they are estimated to be $103,000 in year two. But by redefining the base year, the tenant doesn't owe anything yet because now we're taking the difference over $103,000. And so at this point, we haven't looked far enough ahead to make an estimate of what that amount could be. So again, in this example, what we're really talking about is who is responsible for paying what? And I think it's from here that we can probably best understand it through a quick illustration through multiple years. So if this tenant agrees that $100,000 in that first year is the operating expense budget or estimate, and every year thereafter expenses increase by 3%, if it's under a traditional year one base year, base stop lease, then that means that the operating expenses due by the owner will always be $100,000. And the operating expenses due by the tenant will be the difference over the $100,000 every year. So this tenant would owe the owner $3,000 in the second year, $6,090 in the third year, and so on. Because with every year, as those operating expenses increase, they would owe more to the owner. But if you'll notice, what the owner effectively pays is still only $100,000 every year for the next five years. And the reason is because the base stop lease stops, limits, establishes a ceiling on the amount that that owner pays, and it shifts responsibility onto the tenant. So the tenant may not pay anything year one, and if operating expenses increase, they would only be responsible for the increase moving forward. So as a quick example, if operating expenses never increased, then both parties win. The owner would always pay $100,000 and the tenant would never pay anything. So as we explore the application of a base stop lease in subsequent episodes, I think it's really important to keep in mind what that relationship really means. Again, we're putting a ceiling on the amount that the owner pays, and we're putting a floor on the amount that the tenant reimburses. So the reason this is important is because as you take a look at different leases with different proportionate shares or pro rata shares, then keeping in mind how these leases interact with other leases and how they ultimately will help an owner understand the estimate of reimbursable revenue that they can come to expect, it'll help them define their leasing strategy and then thereafter their overall investment strategy and performance. So again, just one more time for posterity. Keep in mind, proportionate share is going to be important. So if this tenant, just for simplicity, occupies 100% of the building and operating expenses are scheduled to increase 3% a year, the tenant is going to be responsible for reimbursing, repaying the landlord, the increase and only the increase over the base year's operating expense. So to recap, the base stop lease is kind of closer towards the full service lease than it is a triple net lease because it really establishes a, a, a pretty low threshold for reimbursement but there is still some. So the tenant is responsible for paying any increase over the base year's operating expenses. And this effectively limits the amount of operating expense exposure that an owner would have. That's why the base year definition is critical, making sure that both parties understand what year starts the clock and what are the expenses in that year whether it's prior year, current year, or a forward year of some kind. So if you found this video helpful, I'd encourage you to take a look at a handful of others. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you soon.